Acne vulgaris, as I'm sure you all know, this is not always an easy thing to treat. Here is a list from a review done in 2016 on all the available complementary alternative treatments for acne. We are definitely not limited in treatment options. However, how do we narrow that list down for our patients? A logical starting point is to look at the pathophysiology of acne. So acne vulgaris is an inflammation of the pilus sebaceous gland with a strong endocrine component. Here we have a hair follicle with its adjacent sebaceous gland. Pilus sebaceous glands have androgen receptors, and androgens can stimulate an increased release of sebum. That increased sebum creates a perfect environment for the proliferative growth of the propion bacterium acne. This bacteria releases free fatty acids, which causes irritation, leading to cytokine release and inflammation. Furthermore, you have insulin, an insulin-like growth factor, which stimulates the keratinocytes to produce more keratin. This can result in a keratin plug the narrowing of, and the narrowing of the follicular canal. Insulin and IGF-1 can also amplify androgens. So you now have a hair follicle, now you have a follicular obstruction, flourishing bacteria, and inflammation. So let's bring this back to nutrition and potential treatment options, beginning with chromium. So according to 2014 meta-analysis, chromium improves glycemic control in diabetes and has the potential to improve insulin sen sensitivity and decrease free testosterone. If this is the case, then by extension, it should be a good acne treatment. At this point, you should have two questions. Does your patient have a symptom picture of glucose dysregulation or androgen excess? Maybe PCOS or diabetes? If yes, this may be an effective treatment. So then, what does the research look like? For chromium, I could only find two RCTs that had acne reduction as secondary outcome measures, and one showed improvement and one didn't. It is important to note that the study subjects were adolescents with PCOS. With this in mind, when it comes to acne treatments, if you have a patient with signs of androgen excess, PCOS, or glucose dysregulation, and wish to prescribe chromium to regulate those imbalances, you may see added benefits of the reduction of acne symptoms. However, also based on this information, I would not suggest you use it if your patient doesn't fit that symptom picture. Finally, I would like to make a side note that brewer's yeast also has been suggested as an acne treatment, but this is based on its high chromium content, so that would be a good thing to keep in mind if you are considering it as a treatment option. Conventional approaches to treating acne vulgaris involve the use of oral and topical antibiotics, retinoids, and oral contraceptives. When people think nutrition, they think of vitamin A. Antibiotic resistance in cutaneous P. acnes is a global problem. Using non-antibiotics like zinc can prevent resistance and help reduce the dependence on antibiotics. Zinc is bacteriostatic against P. acnes, converts retinol to retinoic acid, and it downregulates the production of IGF-1, thereby suppressing sebum production through its anti-androgenic activity. In a randomized double-blind trial, zinc gluconate was found to be equally effective as monocycline in the treatment of severe inflammatory acne. This may be a simple initial alternative to oral antibiotics in adolescents. Success rates for treatments with zinc vary greatly depending on the baseline nutritional status, precise zinc preparation used, and severity of acne. However, based on the risk-benefit between antibiotics versus zinc and the research, we feel zinc should be moved from a second-line treatment to a first-line treatment, especially given the usefulness of treating severe inflammatory acne. Long-term zinc supplementation should be accompanied by copper supplementation to prevent zinc-induced copper deficiency. The Western diet has been implicated in the development of acne, mainly refined carbs and dairy products with effects on insulin and IGF-1. Epidemiologic data looking at populations with a diet of low glycemic load and no dairy, essentially paleo, were all acne-free. Acne prevalence increased when they consumed a Western diet. In addition, after a search of ND assist, recommendations include avoiding dairy and refined sugar. The question is, does the evidence support this? Let's start with a low glycemic diet. Two interventions looked at low glycemic load diets over 10 and 12 weeks, male and female patients aged 15 to 27, and found acne lesions reduced 28 to 50 percent. In opposition to a recent Cochrane review, after we read the evidence, we feel that the positive effect and low cost supports LGL diet interventions in acne patients. High milk consumption is associated with an increase in circulating IGF-1 in humans and contains androgen precursors. Three papers looking at dairy and teenagers with large study populations all found that an association existed between mild to moderate acne and skim milk consumption, but not full fat milk consumption, with conflicting evidence from other dairies such as cheese. Since the glycemic index of skim milk is lower than that of full fat milk, perhaps it is actually the glycemic load of milk rather than the dairy content contributing to these results. So what does that mean for the patients? Based on the current evidence, we recommend a low glycemic diet for a period of at least 10 weeks in acne patients, but not elimination of dairy. Evidence is weakly correlational and methodological flaws, unless the sensitivity exists. There are many things causing contributing to acne, and it is essential that you address each case individually. While zinc appears appropriate in most populations to treat severe acne, chromium and bruise yeast are only beneficial for some with PCOS, diabetes, or androgen excess symptoms. And dairy elimination only makes sense in patients with a sensitivity or future studies may show in patients with glucose dysregulation. 
Finally, it is a value to keep in mind what part of the psychopathophys the intervention is addressing as the original blanket approach.